Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, author of Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is, what exactly do you store in a Faraday cage? And the idea is you create a protective enclosure of things that you would like to have survive an EMP attack. So what I did is I gathered together a few things here and I'll just talk you through some ideas. Now what I'm going to show you here is not all inclusive, so your needs may be different, your items that you store may be different, but this might give you some ideas. So let's just walk around the table and take a look at some of the items. Maybe they'll give you some ideas of things that you might like to store. So the first thing is you may want to store a laptop. All right, now an old laptop like this is an old one that I haven't used in quite some time, um, along with a charger for it. The reason is, is that you can fully load that laptop with a lot of useful information, critical papers like birth certificates, um, social security cards, reference information, medical journals, lots of things that could be very, very handy for you. Um, and having a screen at which you could operate on and be able to search that data can be, can be really useful. So while it may be true you may not have internet and you may, may or may not have electricity, obviously it's going to run out of juice pretty quick if you don't have electricity, but there are lots of backup sources for electricity that you could use to charge a laptop. They don't take an incredible amount of power. So I think a laptop, an old laptop, is pretty handy. Another thing that might be handy is something maybe like a blood pressure monitor. Something to make sure that your health is doing okay. A lot of people have health issues and they need electronic devices to monitor that health. Maybe glucose meters, blood pressure monitors, those are good examples of that. So keeping something like that stored can really be life-saving. So the next thing you might think about storing is some kind of a hand tool. Now if you're like me, you've got a garage full of various hand tools. It's nice to keep maybe uh, one hand tool, a backup tool of some sort, in your Faraday cage. Now while they're pretty robust, admittedly, they're, they're not likely to be damaged by an EMP, they still could be. And so keeping one on hand, uh, tucked away maybe in a Faraday cage, is probably a good idea. Now as far as batteries, Normal batteries like you know, AAA, a 9-volt D-cell, those things do not need to be stored in a Faraday cage. They're not going to be damaged by an EMP. Batteries that have built-in charging systems, and I think these lithium-ion batteries do, um, you would want to store a spare set of batteries because they have a potential of being damaged. So the short answer is normal batteries that you think of um, that just go in and out of your appliances, those don't need to be stored. But if you have rechargeable batteries that might have their own recharging electronics in them, they, they would need to be stored. Next thing I have here is a Geiger counter. Um, this one's by Mazur Instruments, and it's a really nice little unit. And again, you don't know what threats you're going to face. An EMP might cause, let's say, a nuclear reactor nearby to start having troubles, and it might be really, really important to have a Geiger counter. And so keeping something like this, a very small unit, uh, in your Faraday cage makes sense. Um, next comes things like, this is a, a position locator beacon. Now, these are really great devices. Uh, if you don't know what they are, look them up on the web. But essentially they have a little deployable antenna and anywhere in the world you are, if you deploy this system and you hit a button saying I'm in trouble, it alerts uh, an international agency that essentially says, hey, this person needs rescue. Now, they're not for, for just any old kind of thing. My car broke down on the side of the road. Tonight. They're really life-threatening kind of things. And it's true that during an EMP, they may or may not provide that relief that you're looking for, but they certainly could. It could be that some agencies are still functioning and they may still treat it as their duty to respond to these calls. So keeping a spare one in your Faraday cage or, or the unit that you have in your Faraday cage makes sense to me. Um, again, this shows a, a battery system and a recharger. I think in the case of these complex batteries that are rechargeable like this, it would make sense to keep something like that stored away in your Faraday cage. The next thing might be an LED flashlight. Now flashlights aren't terribly susceptible because they're very small scale electronics. But they still could be damaged. The diodes could certainly be damaged, as could some of the electronics inside. So keeping a couple of spare LED flashlights makes sense. Um, I've got a, um, a small flash drive here. Now again, the electronics are tiny in this, so it's unlikely to be damaged, but it could be. So loading all of your important papers, your finances, your birth certificates, your social security cards, just like we talked about for the laptop, but keeping a spare set of important files and books and references on a flash drive, and these things are huge now, um, for very low money. It, it just seems reasonable to do and keep that valuable information tucked away in a Faraday cage and if push comes to shove at least you've got all that information. You can prove your identity, you've got some reference information and so forth assuming you can get to a functioning computer display of some sort. The next thing to consider would be a set of two-way radios and of course with an antenna their purpose is to pull in RF energy and so an EMP which is a broadband uh, energetic pulse would very likely come into the uh, radio and perhaps cause damage to the front end. So obviously two-way radios could be really handy, right? And now, admittedly, their range might only be a couple of miles, 
but it'd be really nice to be able to communicate with uh, family and loved ones who are close by maybe gathering supplies or you want to keep in touch with your neighbors or other things. So two-way radios I think are really vital. Similarly, you might consider storing a cell phone. Now, it's a fair criticism to say, well, what good is a cell phone if the cell service is down? And that's probably true. I, it's hard to imagine a scenario where the cell service would not go down during an EMP. Um, so you probably would not have cell service. But what you could do is you could use your cell phone with some supplementary devices such as these Go antennas. Now the Go antennas communicate wirelessly with the cell phone. Basically it's an antenna that you deploy maybe in a tree or outside your window and then somebody else uses the other one with their cell phone and you can do point-to-point -point communication without the use of two-way radios. So it's sort of like a two-way radio alternative um, but using your cell phones. It's an interesting product, um, Go antenna. You can look for these or other products that are similar to them. Uh, next might be some kind of all-purpose radio. Now this is a world band receiver, so it's got a shortwave receiver in it, an FM, AM, all of that sort of in one. It's also got a hand crank unit so you can charge it up if the batteries uh, go out. So having some kind of good general purpose radio that allows you to tune into broadcast uh, around the world really, um, I think would be very important. Uh, next thing I have, this is a, a portable GPS. Now again, our cell phones have GPS, but we may not have uh, the access to the cell phone services. So we might have to rely on handheld GPS units. Uh, and that's what this is. This is a specific unit that communicates with overhead satellites and displays GPS information. They're, they're used to be really popular. They're not as popular now because, of course, cell phones do so much for us. But it might be worth considering having something like this where you know your relative position and you know maybe if you've hidden goods where you, you could write down the GPS coordinates and return of that cache. There's lots of reasons to know uh, the coordinates of specific positions precisely. So having a GPS system uh, would be also very handy. Uh, next thing would be maybe a multimeter. So this is a Fluke multimeter and it lets you do a number of things. Um, it lets you measure voltage and current and resistance. Um, so you could check electronics, you could check wires to see if they're hot so you didn't accidentally electrocute yourself. Um, it, you know, repair devices using information that you extracted using the, the meter. I think having a meter, if you know how to use it, um, could be really important. Moving on, we have, um, we have a scanner. Now a scanner, I think everybody could see the value of that. This would let you perhaps listen in on you know, broadcast from your local police or your fire or emergency systems. And it could be really handy to have that information because when an EMP occurs, probably the thing that people are going to notice first is the lack of communication. They're not going to know what's going on and they're not going to be able to receive information. So having a functional way to receive emergency broadcasts and just in general information flowing around um, could be really vital to your survival. Um, next is another medical device. Now, I mentioned the blood pressure monitor. This is just a different one, a uh, different type of device. This one is a uh, a device that measures your oxygen level in your blood. Now this is particularly important during our coronavirus uh, which is why I got this device. But again I'm just highlighting that there are various medical devices that could be handy. Some of them may be more critical than others but having them stored and you know that they're going to be functional after an event like that uh, would be very important. And then finally I've got an inverter here. Um, having some form of backup power um, could be really critical even if it's small like this, where you could take, you know, maybe you've got a couple of old car batteries and you can connect to this inverter and you can draw a little bit of energy off of it, that might let you recharge your electronics, which could make all the difference, uh, perhaps in some case where you needed to recharge a, a laptop briefly or, or a phone or something else that you're using, maybe batteries that go in your radio or your two-way or your, your scanner or whatever. Having the ability to recharge things is critical. Um, and if you have larger inverters and maybe mini batteries, you can also power electronics, you know, small-scale electronics in your home that, that, again, would be very handy to do. Now, inverters are not the only option. There are other options. There's solar power generation. There's certainly portable solar power generation systems you can buy, um, which generate a DC power. Again, you can then have some kind of an inverter. Sometimes they're built into them in a module, like the Kodiak products, for example. Um, and again, that's the same idea, but now you're using solar to bring in a, a consistent source of energy as opposed to batteries to provide that energy. So having a backup power system of some sort, whether it's battery driven to an inverter or whether it's solar power generation, some way in which you can have some very modest level of energy by which you could use to recharge things or use to operate some of your smaller scale electronics, I think is also very important. 
So this is just some ideas, okay? A lot of people ask, what do we store? Well, these are some ideas to consider. You might have no use for a hand tool or an emergency beacon or whatever the case may be, but you may have some other needs that you have. Maybe you wanna store some spare parts for, for your vehicle or something like that. What you wanna do is look at your life and see the kinds of things that you're dependent on, things that are valuable to you. And those are the things you need to ask yourself. Is this able to be damaged by high energy pulse? And if the answer is yes, then maybe you ought to consider either storing it in a Faraday cage or storing a spare in the Faraday cage. Again, I hope this was helpful. It just gives you some ideas. Um, feel free to post your comments. Maybe you have some ideas too of things that should be stored. I'd be curious to see those.